sometimes you just have to get started whenever you're short of time just give it a go i continued that yesterday from yesterday i talked about continuity like i was literally not going to make the episode yesterday and then as soon as i press play you just have to start talking and when i was at school yesterday it's 90 percent i showed up i got, got it going i got it started um i'm on the back end of a big one last night i uh it was at my first 92nd birthday so my mate's um mum who's 92 we went out for a meal and the thing i found the most interesting is when the mind sharp it doesn't matter about everything else obviously when you're 92 you know you're aging quite a lot but my mate's taught his mum she's really interesting she's still got a lot about her and memory is unbelievable but one of the biggest things that came out for me was obviously when you're older if you're on your own you spend a lot of time on your own so these opportunities that you get you grab them whenever you can and she really enjoyed it and you could see the joy in her face and that's made me think that there's a lot of elderly people out there who really want to have a conversation but we don't know it's because they don't ask us so it's been it's about looking out for opportunities to speak to people because i know that you know like for instance i went for i remember being at a coffee shop and i asked this old guy i said is that what if i sit next to you and he went yeah and i sat down and i usually do i'm a chatter i don't know if you've worked that out yet but I, uh, I just started a conversation, and within one minute, the conversation was flowing. And as he was talking, I looked at him, and I thought, you really wanted to talk to me, but you wouldn't have made any effort to do it, because I think you think that no, because everyone looks at you as your age, and not as the person behind it. And it made me think about that at that time. Last night, we tried his mum. It was, I love, and she's so interesting as well. She's really into horse racing. She's been to every horse racing course, apart from one, in the country. She likes a gamble. I'm not putting gambling across, but um, it made me think of an interesting analogy that I did recently. <laughs> this is a funny analogy. So recently, when you get the toilet roll in, you get this big 24 pack, and you abundance. You're using it for cleaning, you're using it for everything. You know, you don't care about it. You know, you don't. You know, you like gung ho with how much you use and whatnot. When you start getting to the last bit and you're on the last roll, and there's only so much left, and maybe the time's gone and. You start getting a little bit more conservative, you know, you're counting the amount of things you've got and whatnot. And I suppose that's like life. When you're younger, you're the toilet roll, you don't care. And as you get older, you realise you've only got so much left. And you're much more delicate with that time of doing it. I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was a good analogy to use. Um, yeah, so I think the follow-on for that for me is just remembering that, you know, it's not, it's, it's uh it's not an infinite reality that we have. It's a short thing. And one of the things I was talking about a lot yesterday was about using opportunities, grabbing them while they're there and going for them. Because I, made, I made the uh, example of no one walks past you with a handful of opportunities and you have a little look and you go, oh, right, yeah, I'll have one of them. It doesn't work like that. It takes for you to jump at opportunities, grab opportunities, make opportunities come your way. There's two quotes that I absolutely love like this. Michael Jordan said... You miss 100%, 100% of the shots that you do not take. Well, that's pretty obvious. And my favourite one was really sussed up me, and I think I'm representing it now by being stood up here and sticking to the continuity that I said, even though I still haven't got round to popping this out there so anyone else can listen to. I know it's going to be there. When I set a goal and I'm doing it, I'm just quite busy, but it's going to come up and I'm going to get a chance. But a winner is just a loser that never gave in. I'll let you sit on that one. A winner is just a loser that never gave in. You know, because what you forget about every winner is how many times they failed, and you don't see that. I watched England last night, and they failed. A brilliant team, and they failed. But you know what? It's just a game last night, and then there's another game. And I actually think when you come out of such a failure, when you're so good, that's when you will win. Because at the minute, it doesn't matter. You know, we're still doing all right in this group. The next game, we need to win our draw, I think. But I think we're going to come out a different team. Because they failed. And sometimes it's our failings that make us. And if you're too scared to go out and fail, then you're never going to get the winnings that come with it. And you'll stay in this like loop of life that's acceptable. And you know where you're at. And you never stretch it. But when you get the end of life and you look back, you'll always worry about um, the fact that you didn't quite go for them things. You didn't go for them shots. So you didn't get any of them. It's interesting. So uh, I'm in a new work. Where are we on now? Four minutes. I've got this new, I'm working in a new school teaching, I'm just working there for the next, till July, 
and it's it's interesting you meet the kids and you get on all with the kids let's not forget there's a there's an adult dimension there's a whole staff of people that you're gonna have to integrate with and uh pretty sure one of them really doesn't like me and i think it's come from him having a conversation with me and something in that conversation he's decided he doesn't like me. he's either don't like me or he's really really miserable so i was on the phone to my best mate last night and i told him about this and he started laughing because we're quite very similar he said to me he goes the problem with being really liked is there's always going to be someone who really doesn't like you and he went i know what you're going to tell me next and i went what's that he goes you're going to try and win him over <laughs> And I thought, you know what I am? And he, he should maybe tell you that you should just leave them and whatnot. But I like the game. And I think if he's miserable, this is what I do this for. For any of you that are listening, that are struggling to manage your own happiness, how you feel, your well-being. And it takes an opportunity to listen to how someone else does it. And you can start taking from it. So, I, I, talking to my best mate, he is... See, he hasn't gone for as many shots as he should. Because every single shot he gets in... I believe him to be a messiah and he's got such special leadership qualities. He's got he's in this new job and he's doing what he does everywhere he goes. He's a natural born leader. The only thing is he's capped where he ever wants to be because I believe if he decided to run the country and be prime minister that he genuinely could do it. Whatever he decided he could do it, it's just that sometimes he doesn't decide it. So he falls into these places and everyone wants to be his mate. Everyone loves him. And he's got this quality about him and I think that is that you? Are you that person who's got all them things, but really, you, you don't know it. You know, and sometimes you require someone else to tell it you. Or maybe you're happy where you I always think that he's happy where he is. But, um, yeah, it's interesting that we have the people around us who make us who we are. So next week, I'll probably be not making any episodes. Not that anyone's listening. I'm speaking to myself at the minute. I'm going on holiday next week with my family. And it's funny, it's the first family holiday from eight years ago when me and my kids is once well. And now we're going back on a family holiday because she's getting married. And I'm blessed and lucky enough to be attending it. It's like the most exciting thing ever, but it's interesting. It's a perspective thing. And that's what my gift is, perspective, with everyone else. But when I tell people I'm going to my ex-wife's wedding, it's so interesting because everyone's shocked. I love my ex-wife. I don't like calling her that. I like to call her my kids' mum because she's always believed in me. She's always been kind to me. She's always looked out for me. How could I ever turn that down? And now I love a future husband. He's like the coolest guy ever. So I get to go there and it's like, you can do whatever you want as long as it's two accepting things that happens. And if you start listening to what other people say, they'll always interfere with it and they'll not understand it. And you've got your own individual thing and you should just, when you know it's right, just stick with it. And I think it comes out to one of my problems is I, I mean, it's pretty ironic really because I'm telling everyone my stuff, but sometimes I've told people my stuff in the past and they've interfered with how they do it or how they go about it. And I've often thought it's things like that can sometimes ruin your plan, ruin what you're going to do because you listen to someone else, how they do it. Sometimes just be pretty cool with what you are. Remember the story you tell yourself is unique to you. It doesn't matter about what anyone else, but sometimes we tell each other that story that, that we... What we define as what we are is us. And when someone else comes into that story, all they want to do is spoil it. Well, some of us are going to have to get going to work. So if you are, let this day be yesterday I talked about hugging, saying something good to someone. Let this day be the day that you tell someone that what they mean to you. Or you tell them how good they are at what they do. Because what, and I'll tell you to tell, those who are absolutely brilliant at what they do, hardly ever get told that they're good. Because everyone just believes that they know it. But what happens if like, someone's really important? One day they just want you to say, you know what, I really value what you do. You're a great manager. You're a great parent. You're a great friend. Whatever it may be. Go out and tell them. You have the most amazing day. Thanks so much for listening.